G'day, I'm Dr. Peter Price of Classroom Professor. Welcome to this week's video in the Free Math Worksheet series. This is video number 40 and the topic this week is 10 frames. This doesn't come from a particular book of worksheets, normally they do. I can point you to a particular book that we have available. Uh, this one is just a, um, an introduction to 10 frames and so it's a set of worksheets that we put together specifically for this week's um, video. So if you've watched any of my videos before you'll probably have heard me talk about 10 frames simply because I think they're so useful. Um, so if you're interested in going further, if you haven't seen it, there's a PD series I put together called Developing Number Fluency and one of the first things I talked about was 10 frames because they're just so fantastically useful. So let me just explain what a 10 frame is and why they're so useful and why I think you should be using them with your students, assuming that you're teaching um, young students in primary school or elementary school. So the 10 frame, it's one of the simplest resources to produce. I just print these on the computer, they're so easy. You just make a, a table with 10 uh, square cells in it give it some borders you know so that you can see it and then we simply use counters and if you've got magnetic counters then of course you can use a whiteboard like I am with your students and we just put the counters on the 10 frame like that. Now let me make a point here some teachers I've heard um, write numbers in the squares you don't need to do that we don't need the numbers there that's not the point in fact rather the opposite we don't want the numbers written down what we want is for the students to visually recognize how many counters there are without counting and without any other cues so if you write the symbols in here then they'll be if you like distracted by the symbols or or you know it'll be a sort of a shortcut to save them having to think and that sort of thing we don't want that at all we just want to say here are some counters tell me how many there are and of course the skill that we're um, developing in our students and there are two ways to spell it so I better put both of them is subitizing with an S or a Z and that of course it, it, you possibly perhaps so I'm not going to make any assumptions you may remember this from your studies at university because it's not a word you'd use with your students very often um, it's the skill of being able to count a group of objects by just looking at them. So it's effectively not really counting, it's recognizing how many there are and just go, that's four. So an adult can look at that easily and go, that's four. You don't have to apply a numeral to each one and go one, two, three, four. If I put 20 of them on there, you'd, you'd have to count them unless they're in some ordered arrangement uh, because there are too many. But with small numbers, we can subitize. All right. So our students will get used, they can subitize small numbers anyway, but we want to stretch it beyond the small numbers because subitizing usually goes to about four or five. But we can carry that much further and say, for example, how many are there now? Once the students are familiar with the basic numbers, it won't be hard for them to see that that is the number seven because there are four here and three there. The other arrangement I recommend is to fill one uh, line of five first and then the other two, so uh, the others I should say. So that would be a, an alternative arrangement for seven. And again, you can easily see it seven, providing you know a little bit of uh, maths that you know that you know five and two make seven. So every number that we represent with a 10 frame can be easily subitized. So we can go all the way to nine, we can go all the way to 10. There's no difficult numbers there. They're all easy. They're all easy to, once you, you know, once the student gets their, their head around the numbers up to 10. So they're familiar with the numbers, the names, the symbols and that sort of thing. They will quickly get used to the idea that when it's all full, that's 10. And if you take one away, that must be one less than 10. So that's nine. If we have two lines of four, that's eight and so on and so on and so on. And so as the students become familiar with using the 10 frame and become familiar with the numbers, they're developing a knowledge of the numbers that I believe would be almost intuitive. Just like for you and I, when we glance at that, if I said to you, explain to me how you know that's eight, you'd probably have to stop for a minute and go, well, what are you talking about? Of course it's eight. I can see it's eight. It's so easy. I can't even work out you know how to make it more complicated 
because you sort of intuitively feel that that's eight because you, you are very, very familiar with it. I believe students will be able to do the same thing. That with practice over time, having used 10 frames a lot, they will develop such a knowledge of the numbers up to 10 that they effectively become easy and they become intuitive. And I think that, quite honestly, my firm belief is that if you were to apply this with very young children early on in their schooling, you almost wouldn't need to teach a whole lot of number fact strategies for addition and subtraction because the students would just go, oh, that's easy, I do that with a 10 frame. So they will know, for example, going back to the arrangement for 7, that 4 plus 3 is 7. And they'll just know that because they've seen it so many times in the 10 frame. Or they will know that 5 and 2 is 7. And they won't need to use the count on strategy to start with 5 and count in their head 6, 7 and say 7. They'll just know it's 7 because they've used the 10 frame. So you can tell from what I'm saying, I think 10 frames are outstanding. I wish I'd used them when I was a younger teacher in my classes because they're just so powerful, so useful. All these mathematical ideas are almost bristling with mathematical ideas. I know the numbers are small. It's not going very far, um, but it lays such good foundations for the young students um, that I think it should be just used as a matter of course. Let me go one step further and put up the double 10 frame. So again, we can easily fit this onto a single sheet of photocopied paper. Now we can use this to show numbers that go obviously beyond 10. So let's have a look at one. Let's have a look at that arrangement. Now, just one little point on the orientation of the 10 frames. It's perfectly fine to have these rotated the other way, so the long axis is horizontal. But for double 10 frames, and particularly for dealing with numbers beyond 10, I like to have it in this orientation simply because it matches the notation for the teen numbers. So for a number like this, 13, if we fill up the, the 10 frame on the left, we can then put a 1 and explain to students that is one collection of 10, that's what the 1 means. And then the 1 on the right has the leftover 1s that make up the rest of the number. Just have a think for a moment about the number 13 and how complicated it is. Now again, we grew up as children ourselves. We learned that 13 came after 12 and that's how you write it down and all that sort of thing. But, and I'm sure you're aware of these things, th th these difficulties with teen numbers, they all share them. They're backwards. And what I mean by that is we say the teen last, we say this number first. Now I sh could have started with an easier one like 14. We say the four first, as you know. And if you've taught very young children, you'll know they often write them the wrong way around. And I don't think it's because they're dyslexic, although that could be a problem for some students. It's because of the way we say it. If you say to a child, I want you to write down the number 14. Before you've even said teen, they've probably written the four already. 13 is difficult because it doesn't say 3. It would be helpful if it was called 3 teen, but of course it's not. It's 13. So a child has to associate the th part of the name with the number 3. It's a bit like the number one third or the third in a sequence. Um, so there's a bit of a link there. We don't say 10, we say teen instead of 10. You know, so there are all these difficulties. So 10 frames would be very, very useful to help our students develop a familiarity with the numbers between 10 and 12 and help them deal with all those challenges that the teen numbers pose to them. Now we could go further with this. Um, we can do all the number facts, of course, up to 20. So we could do a number fact like 9 plus 4 quite easily with an arrangement like that. We could even use more 10 frames, but that's a story for another day. But you could multiply this and do multiplication strategies and so on with it as well. Okay, this video is a bit long this week. I hope it's been useful and I look forward to talking to you next time.